Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another installment of the series 12 Classics that I want to read, will read in 2023. Um, I will leave a list to the 12 classics I picked in the description box. Um, and some of you join me sometimes, some month, when there is a classic that you are interested in, which I think is fabulous. In January, we read A Bond's Woman's Narrative by, yeah, a lot of glare, Hannah Craft. Um, and now it's time for February. And at the end of the video, I will pick, I have all the remaining 10 um, classics here. Is it 10? Yes, 10. Uh, I will pick the one for March. But first, February. In February, we read, or I read, and some of you joined me, uh, Olive Schreiner, The Story of an African Farm, uh, published in 1883. Olive Schreiner was born in uh, South Africa, in 1855. Uh, she lived on a farm. Uh, she was the, her family had 12 children. Not, not all of them survived into adulthood. She was actually named after uh, some of the brothers who had died before her. Oliver was one of them. Anyway, just anecdotal. Um, and her parents uh, were uh, missionaries. So it, they lived at, in the East Cape, which is the southeast part of South Africa. Um, and uh, she, when, when Olive grew up, she didn't have a real proper education at first. Uh, she worked as a governess. That's when she actually wrote this book in um, the beginning of the 1880s when she was in her mid 20s um, and she um, the book was quite a, a success when it was published and she, with the work of the uh, as a governess she saved money uh, to finally uh, make the trip overseas to England which she did in 8080 which means that this didn't contribute because it was published in 1883. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> slight, slight error here, but at least I caught it in time. Anyway, so she lived in England for about 10 years. Uh, she did writing. Uh, her health wasn't that good. She suffered from asthma all her life. Um, she wanted to, to become a doctor, but that wasn't possible. So she made her living by writing and uh, she got into activism, women's rights, uh, but also peace movements. Um, she returned to South Africa 10 years later, 1889, um, continued writing, continued her activism, had another trip to Europe just before the second world, uh, the first world war, uh, got into the peace movement. So she had, um, her life was mainly uh, consumed by writing and activism. Um, this book, um, uh, like I said, published in 1883, is considered the one of the first novels uh, by a white female writer uh, coming out of South Africa. That's why I picked it. I thought that sounded really interesting. Um, I have to say the book was more interesting than I thought it was really a success for me as a novel. Um, um, the book is set in an African farm or on an African farm and we follow uh, a group of children mainly um, uh, who live on that farm. The farm is owned by Sunny, a white boer woman, so from Dutch descent, uh, widowed. Um, living with her is M, who is her stepdaughter, so the daughter of uh, uh, Sunny's husband who died. Um, there is a German overseer and his son, we never learn his name, he's always the German, and his son Waldo lives also on the farm. And then there's is Lindell, uh, who is the orphaned cousin of M. So these three children are our main protagonists in terms of coming of age. We follow them from their childhood until um, uh, adulthood, 20s, something like that. And there's also the story of uh, Sunny, who is wooed by some rather 
um, yeah, <laughs> he, he's not a good person. Uh, Bonaparte Blankens, he just wants to marry her so he can uh, get the farm. Um, and there is also the story of the German overseer. So you have a pretty uh, a broad spectrum of, of people, but the focus is on the, these three children and especially Waldo and Lindell. I'm not sure whether the emphasis is right. It's, uh, I will just call her L. Um, and I mean, first of all, you have to, uh, even though Olive Schreiner was an activist also for, uh, you know, human rights and, uh, I wouldn't, she probably wouldn't consider herself a racist person if you had asked her back then. But of course, there is language in the book that we would not use anymore. The way um, the, uh, the hot and tot, for instance, one of the maids is a hot and tot. That's a word we certainly don't use anymore. Kaffir, uh, K-A-F-F-I-R, is also used for African uh, indigenous people. We wouldn't use that. The N-word is once or twice used. So, I mean... I said when I when I talked about the book first that it 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 was or I learned that that's what I saw that she also was critical about, uh, about the treatment of um, uh, African people, South African people. That is true, but still, it's not like an anti-racism book, not at all. So beware of that. It's much more focusing also on. Um, the role of women. And there you can definitely see early feminism when she is talking about Elle's story in particular, who tries to find a way outside of your typical um, route that women had to go at that time, which is marriage and children. So that part is certainly interesting. It's also interesting looking at religion. Of course, I you would say because uh, Olive Schreiner's parents were missionaries. Um, so it was interesting in those parts to give you an idea or give me an idea of life in rural South Africa from a white perspective at the end of the 19th century. Um, why I said in the beginning that it wasn't a that much a success for me as a novel um, because I feel uh, there was too much non-fiction in it, especially the discussion of philosophical uh, topics, religious topics. Uh, there were almost essays in the book about that. Uh, there is a pretty long chapter about Waldo's uh, youth and she takes or Waldo's first couple of years until he becomes a teenager. It's a sort of a looking back. And she uses that as a tool to talk about religion. And even though that is interesting, but as a, like I said, as a novel, that was for me like, mm, no, I just don't like that. But still, oftentimes classics are for me at least, more, um, I read them because I find it interesting, more than that I expect to find a fantastic book. I mean, there are exceptions, absolutely, no doubt, but I go into classics mostly with the um, expectation to learn something about the time uh, and the place that the book is set in. And if it's a really fantastic novel, then that's a bonus, if you understand what I mean. So uh, it's certainly worth, it's not very big, it's 220 pages, so it's not a huge time commitment if you are uh, interested in reading it. But beware of these two um, issues that it's, there is language in there that we today find offensive, and rightfully so, and it has these essayistic uh, chapters where the story is, it, there is not that much story in it. 
I mean, there is story and there is some sort of plot and it's kind of heart-wrenching at times when we learn what happens to Elle. But the main focus, I think, is on topics. Again, I also want to point out it's a debut. So I'm always more lenient when it comes to debuts and my criticism on debuts. The author was very young in her mid-twenties when she wrote this book. So again, I think it's interesting. It's worthwhile. But it's not, in my view, a fantastic novel. So that was February. Um, Now we go on to March. Like I said, there are 10. I have, can you see that? Yeah, I have 10 uh, of these um, in there. And I am decided early on that I would not read them in chronological order, but just pick one randomly each month. So what will we pick? We will pick this one. Uh, and the winner is Oronoko. Oronoko. I have the stack here, and that is Afra Bain, a 17th century writer. Um, and we will read Oronoko in March. So I hope you will join me. As always, um, there's no schedule or anything. It's just that if you want to join in and maybe leave a comment about your experience uh, of the book when I make the video. I will make um, a review video video of in March. I think I've scheduled it, yes, on the 26th again, um, like this one. So 26th of March will be my review of Oronoko by Afra Bain. Um, and then I will pick the April book. This is it for now, my review of the story of an African farm, uh, 12 classics I want to read, I will read in 2023. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.